It's Thursday, April 20th, 2023. Before we start the video today, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you share this video everywhere and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell notification down below so that you are alerted when the newest videos drop. We have a lot to talk about today. I wanna to get right into it. A few articles I wanna share with all of you. Please feel free to comment down below. Let me know what, what you think about some of this news. Let us know what's happening in your areas as far as what's happening uh, in the economy, what's happening in your local economy. But this first article I want to share with all, with all of you, uh, by the way, markets across the board in the red today, and they should have been beaten much worse than they were today, but we know that they're very manipulated. We know that they're rigged. They're having a harder time keeping these markets propped up. And with the kind of news that we're getting, it's going to be much more difficult to manipulate these markets because there is more trouble coming. Philly Fed business survey unexpectedly slumps to worse since Lehman. It puked, plunging, negative, 31.3 in April. Analysts expected it to return back to a negative 19.3, but it went down to a 31.3. Bad, bad sign. Another one from the hedge. The number of Americans claiming jobless benefits hit 17-month high. This number is going to continue to climb, ladies and gentlemen. So last week, 245,000 people filed first-time jobless claims. BuzzFeed, this is on CNBC, will lay off 15% of staff, shutter its new unit. Their stock today was down 19.7%. So as I said a second ago, jobless claims filed for last week, 245,000. The week prior, 240,000. So in a two-week period, a half a million people have filed jobless claims. Think about what the real number is. Think about what's not being reported like independent contractors. How many real estate agents out there have not made any money in months? They don't count. So if you're an independent contractor, you work for yourself, you're not going to count. So this is much worse than we're being told. People who are working part-time, they're not gonna count. Uh, so how many people are really out of a job right now? And how many people have lost a good well-paying job, maybe sixty, seventy thousand, a hundred thousand dollars a year, and now they're working two or three part-time jobs. In, of course, leisure and hospitality, working at hotels and restaurants and making coffees at Starbucks. We're not really being told what's really happening, and unfortunately, this is much worse than most people believe. Home sales fell in March amid volatility in mortgage rates. Sales of previously owned homes declined 2.4% in March compared with February. Sales were down 22% from a year ago. Think about that. Previously owned homes, sales down 22%. That is an enormous number, and it's about to get much, much worse because Real estate is based on what? It's based on jobs. If people don't have jobs, if they don't have a good income, they cannot buy a house. They cannot qualify for a house. And we're gonna to continue to see this inventory of qualified buyers shrink. Forget about the inventory of homes. Think about the inventory of buyers. It is disappearing, it's drying up because people just don't have the income. Real wages are decreasing. People's credit, uh, their credit scores uh, are, are being slammed now because they're falling farther and farther behind. Uh, we have 20 million people who can't even pay their utility bills in this country. How in the world are people gonna buy a house? You have 15,000 repos a day in, in the auto sector. How in the world are people gonna buy a house if they can't afford to keep their cars? This is where we're at right now, and people don't want to admit what's happening. Most of you already know what's happening. The hedge, home foreclosures and missed credit card payments surge as consumers buckle. Now, foreclosures in housing are still pretty low, but they're up 22% from a year ago. Banks, no doubt, are expecting more turmoil uh, with consumers. And how do we know that? Well, Wells Fargo set aside $1.2 billion in the first quarter to cover potential loan losses. Bank of America provisioned $931 million for credit losses, much higher than the $30 million they set aside a year prior. JP Morgan set aside $2.3 billion. This is, an, is a very ominous sign for trouble ahead. This is telling you and I that the consumer is in big trouble right now. 
They're in big trouble right now. How many people do you know, do I know, who right now uh, are existing on credit cards? They're existing on debt, personal loans, uh, credit cards, uh, the home equity line that they pulled out last year. Uh, this is what they're living on. They're living off the debt. And this is, um, is going to come to an end. It is going to come to an end, and it's going to be very, very ugly. This is going to dwarf what we saw in 2008. And the more I, I go back and watch videos on the 1929 collapse and the Great Depression, the more and more uh, this begins to look more similar, except this is going to be so much worse because there's so much more debt out there. People have been living beyond their means for over a decade in this country. I mean, think about you know, first-time home buyers buying homes at five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars. A first-time home buyer living in a three thousand square foot house, driving a Lexus or a BMW. I mean, people are gonna get absolutely annihilated here. And many people are gonna get what they deserve. They've been living so far. Uh, over their head so far uh, uh, beyond their means. It, it's not even funny. And uh, it's not going to be funny what happens because we know that there's going to be huge ramifications uh, that take place in society, uh, which, you, you know, it's going to be crime. It's going to be homelessness. It's going to be hunger. It's all going to take place. People you know are going to go homeless. People you know are going to go hungry. This is all going to happen. It's begun to happen right now. After declining for weeks, mortgage rates increase. This is on Fox Business. 30-year fixed rate, according to this article, is 6.39%. I checked bank, bankrate.com today. It's at 6.81. Again, all of this depends on the job market. Whether the rate's 10%, 12%, 3%, if people don't have jobs, they're not buying houses. And we are going to see a housing collapse take place in America, I have no doubt. Uh, let me know what you think. Are we going to avoid a housing uh, collapse here, or are we going to see one? I think we're going to see a real big one. Real estate expert shreds administration rule punishing home buyers with good credit. It's madness. This on Fox Business. So what they're trying to propose right now and pass is if you have a good credit score and you go, you go out and you buy a house, you're going to be rewarded by paying a fee so that people who don't have good credit, who can't afford a house, you're going to pay a fee so that those people can go buy a house. So think about how crazy this is. We're going to reward people with good credit, people that saved up enough money, put a down payment down, people who, who've protected their credit, have a good credit score, can afford to buy a house, we're going to reward them by charging them more so that we can give that to people who have a bad credit score, who didn't save enough for the down payment, who probably shouldn't even be qualified to buy a home. This is absurd. And think about the consequences here where, I mean, we're going back to 2008 again. We're, we're going to allow people to buy homes that should not be allowed to buy homes, causing even a bigger crisis. So how in, this, how in the world is this going to be good for the real estate market? You, you think about it. If I go and buy a house tomorrow, I'm going to pay more. I'm going to pay a fee so that people who didn't work as hard, didn't qualify, didn't have the same down payment, they're going to be rewarded with me paying them a fee. It's incredible. California power companies roll out fixed rate bill proposal. I don't know if... if Many of you heard about this, but th again, this is why if you live in California, you, you're probably already having that talk with your family tonight or you did last week or last month or you're going to have this talk about exiting California. They want to charge you based on how much income you make, how much money you make. That They're going to base your, 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 your um, power bill. Uh, they're going to base your utility bill uh, on how much money you make. So again, if you're doing very, very well, well, the more they're going to take. If you're not doing well, the more they're going to give you. Uh, I, you know, I just don't get it. I, I think California, it, it, are they purposely just trying to get rid uh, of people that have good jobs? Are they trying to get rid of businesses? Are they trying to get rid of, of real workers and people that really... Uh, pay the taxes here, pay, pay into the taxes, uh, keep California somewhat afloat. Um, they cannot do enough 
to get people to leave California. The, the people with the jobs, the innovators, the people who produce, the people who make money, the businesses, they cannot do enough to get rid of these people, including myself. I cannot wait to get out of here. Another article coming from CNBC today. Veteran investor David Roche says a credit crunch is coming for small town America. He says the collapse of SVB and two other smaller banks last month triggered contagion fears that led to record outflows of deposits from smaller banks. Billions of dollars of outflows from small and mid-sized lenders were redirected to the Wall Street giants. A couple of them we know very well, JP Morgan, uh, Wells Fargo, Citigroup. Small banks, the, these regional smaller banks account for 50% of lending. People that live in smaller towns, small communities, they go to smaller banks. It's gonna get very, very hard to borrow money. And now the, the, the um, tightening uh, to get a mortgage right now, I hear is extremely uh, tough. Uh, they literally want blood uh, in order to get a mortgage right now. And it's gonna get tighter. And we're gonna see this uh, no doubt affect the economy, slow the economy down. Think about if you're a small business, uh, how do you expand if you can't borrow money? Uh, how do you buy a car if you can't borrow money? How do you buy a house if you can't borrow money? Uh, interest rates on credit cards going up. So how are people gonna continue to service these debts as rates continue to go up? And we're seeing big problems in commercial real estate as uh, a lot of this debt is gonna be rolling over this year and rates are much higher. Another article today coming from The Hedge. Peter Schiff, a death blow is coming for the dollar and people will run to gold. And I think we're seeing a lot of that take place right now. Gold had a nice day. Uh, I, I've heard that silver sales right now are record-breaking numbers. Uh, premiums are gonna continue to climb up. You look at premiums for Eagles right now, it, it's unbelievable. But when you, when you stop comparing paper, gold, and silver and you start looking at real physical gold and silver, which you should be holding, not paper. Uh, I don't see the prices going down much. Yes, they're gonna fluctuate. There's gonna be a little bit, bit of volatility here and there, but I think at the end of the day, by the end of this year, prices are gonna be much higher than they are right now. And if anything breaks from now till then, there's no telling how high uh, this can go. And if we see more problems with the dollar, which we're going to in the next year or two, gold and silver are gonna continue to shine. People right now, are reluctant to even say that we're in a financial crisis. You know that we've been in a, in a recession. I believe that, it, that this recession has evolved now uh, into a depression. Let me know your thoughts. Are we in a recession right now? Are we in a depression right now? Uh, are we even in a financial crisis right now? Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. But this is gonna be much more uh, impactful than the 2008 crisis without a doubt. And I, I say that because the debt is so much bigger, the inflation is so much worse. Uh, you look at what's happening geopolitically, we're, we're looking at world war, uh, we're looking at the massive layoffs, uh, and we're looking at the bubbles that are so much bigger than the bubbles we saw back in 2008. And we could go on and on and, and make comparisons, but it's much, much worse now than 2008. And in fact, I don't even think you can compare today to 2008, it's, you, it's apples and oranges. This is much more similar to 1929. But again, I think it will be worse than 1929. Peter Schiff says banks would be failing right now if the US government stepped away. And that's so true. So what does that tell you? Um, there are no fundamentals. The economy cannot function without the Fed uh, or, or the US government stepping in uh, because it's broken and it's rigged and it's completely manipulated now. And without the uh, government st uh, stepping in, it's done. So that tells you that what we're watching in the markets is fake. It's all artificial. It's dependent on more injections of fake money. The addict is addicted to the fake money. And once you take that away, I mean, you know, if we didn't bail out these banks for $500 billion, what would happen today? But as we continue to do this, and at the end, you know, uh, the end result will be uh, when things completely implode, the only thing they can do is print money, and that's exactly what they're gonna do, and that will be the end of the US dollar. That's when we begin to look like Argentina, Venezuela, and this is when we have runaway inflation. If you think the inflation's bad right now, wait till they fire up the printing presses. And eventually, um, that's probably where this is all gonna go. I hope it doesn't. I hope Jerome Powell has some guts. We're gonna find out, but he has a choice to make. It, it, are we going to protect the US dollar or are we gonna protect Wall Street? 
Uh, no matter which way this goes, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be a very, very tough time, and it's going to be a long-lasting period in U.S. history. This is not going to be over in a few months. It's not going to be over in a year. We're going to feel pain no matter what for many, many years to come. Peter Schiff says, we are going to have a run on banks. No money, he says, is safe in the bank right now. He says that either the banks fail and you can't get your money out of the bank or the dollar fails and your purchasing power is gone. So either way, this is going to end very, very badly for the U.S. dollar. I think you have to have some dollars right now, but I think most of all, I think people need to start counting their wealth in ounces and not dollars. And I can tell you this in my humble opinion. Uh, this is me, uh, just my opinion. But I think gold and silver, physical gold and silver, are going to be here much, much longer than the U.S. dollar. They've been here for 5,000 years already. They're going to be here for the next 5,000 years. Can you say that the U.S. dollar will be here for the next 5,000 years? Can you say it will be here in the next five years? Uh, we are watching its purchasing power erode every day. Here's another article today on CNBC, and this just reinforces what I just said, that inflation is not going away. The administration pledges $500 million, $500 million to fight Amazon deforestation, but Congress must approve. So um, I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, you know, we, we, we want to save the Amazon. We want to save the forest. But five hundred million dollars, and then you know that'll go to uh, that'll that'll go to a billion dollars. We're sending billions over to Eastern Europe right now. Uh, it, it just goes on and on and on. Where is this money coming from, ladies and gentlemen? And this isn't about getting political. This is just we're just talking arithmetic, math. We're just talking uh, about balancing a checkbook here. Uh, who's paying for this? And how are we going to pay for this? We're going to print, we're going to borrow, we're going to tax. And at the end of the day, that means you're going to lose even more purchasing power. Again, when you're, when you're sending money all over the world, when you're saving force um, all over the world, who's paying for this? And how is this going to affect our purchasing power? This is why I say we're going to see massive inflation. It's not going to go away. And this is, this is going to be extremely good for gold and silver. And it's not even a matter of being good. Um, it's a matter about protecting your wealth and surviving this. They're going to just burn this economy down. They're going to destroy the dollar. And what are you going to have left? You're going to have a third world country and the people with real assets are going to be at the very top. And the people that don't have real assets, that don't have real money, are going to be at the very bottom in food lines, living in tents, living in poverty. And it's going to continue to get worse. Take a look at what's happening right now. I was just watching uh, a, a video on Argentina last night. I believe their inflation is over 100% again. It's been higher, but it just broke 100% for the first time in, 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 in a few years. And people at night are sleeping in their airports. And, I, and, I, and it, it reminded me uh, of, of Chicago, O'Hara Airport, where homeless people are sleeping at O'Hara Airport. And O'Hara Airport now is looking like Argentina, where homeless people uh, are sleeping. And, and people have a choice. They can either live in some hut somewhere with the money that they have, or they can choose to eat. So you, you, can, put a, you can put a roof over your head, or you can choose to eat. That's it. Uh, you can't do both. And so people figure they, they have to eat, so they're going to go live you know, in bus terminals, they're going to go live in airports, and we're seeing more of this right here in the United States. And I will finish with this last article. Mexico's president saying the U.S. is suffering from moral decay, offer some advice. I thought this was pretty interesting. So the Mexican president says, take better care of your kids, try more hugs. He says, cut down on drugs and guns. Uh, he says, keep your cops, troops, and spies off of our turf. And he says, leave the ex-U.S. president alone. Now, I thought Mexico was an ally. This doesn't sound like an ally. This is how an enemy would speak uh, to us. This is, uh, this is how uh, a country uh, that we have conflict with would talk to us, not an ally. So no doubt 
you can you know where this is all going. You know that at some point Mexico will be joining the BRICS. They will be joining China. They will be uh, using the yuan. They will be trading with China. Uh, we're going to find out real fast who our friends are. And I think we're running out of friends, uh, out of friends, ladies and gentlemen. When you weaponize your currency, when you tell the world what to do, when you set up 800 plus military bases around the world, when you print money out of thin air to buy um, goods and services from other countries that have to have to produce this stuff while we just print the paper to buy stuff that was produced with blood, sweat, and tears from other countries, I think there's a lot of resentment from that. I think there's a lot of resentment uh, from the wars that we created and funded with money printed out of thin air. And again, buying things that people actually have to physically make, and we just buy them with money printed out of thin air. We have a GDP that, that is made up of 70% of consumption, people buying things here with money they don't even have. It's going to come to an end, ladies and gentlemen, and we're watching the beginning stages of, of it right now. Take this time and use it as an opportunity to protect yourselves and an opportunity uh, to take advantage of the sales that will be coming because there's going to be a lot of desperation out there when people have to sell land, have to sell houses, have to sell cars, have to sell businesses. It's all coming, ladies and gentlemen, and nothing is going to stop it. God bless. Look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon.